as is necessary for our blessings. There are many of us that are running from pillar to post looking for help. When all we need to do is remind God of our services to him in spite of ourselves. Next Sunday we are going to start a discourse on riddle of the first born son. There is always a problem that follows the first son in every home. We are going to, by the grace of God, expose those things and by his power break every such burdens in our lives in the name of Jesus. So I advise very strongly that next Sunday should not be one that we will toy with. We're going to continue today. Like I said, we're closing this one on the doctrine of tithe and offering. Part three is tithes. First and second part, we looked at offerings. Because after the first sermon, they said we must not stop here. We keep going on it. As I said, it is a topic that we don't talk about here. It doesn't make it right. Scripture is given unto us every part of it that we should understand and operate by. It is my prayer that we don't have to keep talking about things that will be a blessing to us. We're looking at tithes today on part three. Tithing predates the law. In other words, it started before the law was given to Moses. In Genesis chapter 14 verse 18, it is written, And Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine. And he was high God, which hath delivered thine enemies into thy hand. And he gave him tithes of all. Abraham had gone after the powers that rose and stole his nephew Lot and all his belongings. Nine kings went to war, five against four. And Abraham, just about 320 men, after praying to God, went after them. And he recovered everything. There are many people who say here that because Abraham gave tithes of what he captured, he didn't give tithe of what belonged to him. Tithe is 10% of what you earn. That argument is so baseless because everything that Abraham had captured now belonged to him. And he gave tithe from the profit that he made. Even though he gave everything out, that was his own prerogative. Tithing is a basic, we're going to see how that translates into the New Testament. Many times when we hold back from God, we are actually holding back from our own blessings. As long as the earth stands, seed time and harvest time will never cease. It is a divine commandment from God. As a vow, we're going to see Genesis chapter 28 verse 20. And Jacob vowed a vow saying, if God will be with me and will keep me in this way that I go and will give me bread to eat and raiment to put on. 21. So that I come again to my father's house in peace, then shall the Lord be my God. And this stone which I have set for a pillar shall be God's house. And of all that thou shalt give me, I will surely give the tenth unto thee. We can make a vow. I shared how she made a vow. God, if you do this, then I will do this. And she brought her first month's salary. And God began to move in her life. Up to the time that the child was born. We had just finished service here and we were called. That she was in labor. And we ran there and we saw Brother Nick. Eyes red. He had prayed himself out standing by the door. And we prayed a simple prayer with him. And when I heard in my spirit that it was done, I held his hand and I said, congratulations. As we turned to leave, before we got to the door of the hospital, even though it had been several hours and everything was going wrong, nurses were dashing in and out of the door. But the moment we had prayed, as I turned to go, they ran out and said, congratulations, you have a boy. And Daniel is in our midst right now. God honors his word. When you do your part, he does his part. Many times we think we are clever and we hold on from God. We are not holding from him. Heaven and earth belong to him. He has everything that he needs. But he wants to see in our hearts whether we are capable of receiving more blessings from him. We have reasons for tithing. Numbers chapter 28 verse 21. And behold, I have given the children of Levi all the tenth in Israel for an inheritance. For their service which they serve, even the service of the tabernacle of the congregation. 
Neither must the children of Israel henceforth come nigh the tabernacle of the congregation, lest they be seen and die. No more should the children of Israel come into the tabernacle. The Levites henceforth must do that. Anyone daring that will die. Verse 23. But the Levites shall do the service of the tabernacle of the congregation, and they shall bear the iniquity. It shall be a statute forever throughout your generations that among the children of Israel they have no inheritance. But the tithes of the children of Israel which they offer as an heave offering unto the Lord, I have given to the Levites to inherit. Therefore I have said unto thee, among the children of Israel they shall have no inheritance. Thus speak unto the Levites and say unto them, When ye take of the children of Israel the tithes which I have given you from them for your inheritance, then ye shall offer up an heave offering of it for the Lord, even a tenth part of the tithe. So important was the tithe that when 10% was given to the Levites, they had to in turn give 10% back. Everyone must pay tithe. Nehemiah chapter 10 verse 38. And the priests, the son of Aaron, shall be with the Levites. When the Levites take tithes, and the Levites shall bring up the tithe of the tithes, 10% of the tithes, unto the house of our God, to the chambers, into the treasure house. For the children of Israel and the children of Levi shall bring the offering of the corn, of the new wine, of the oil, unto the chambers, where are the vessels of the sanctuary, and the priests that minister, and the porters, and the singers, and we will not forsake the house of our God. Note, various people, verses of the sanctuary and the priests that minister and the porters and the singers, porters, ushers and all and the singers, and we will not forsake the house of our God. Leviticus 27, 30. In all the tithes of the land, whether of the seed of the land or of the fruit of the tree, is the Lord's. It is holy unto the Lord. Concerning the tithe of the herd or of the flock, even of whatsoever passeth under the road, the tenth shall be holy unto the Lord. So if tithing is something that is authorized, then it is holy. If it is not, we shall see what we need to do with it. But if it is, then we have to treat it as something that is holy. In Leviticus chapter 27 verse 31, a law is given where you redeem your tithe. If you fail to meet your tithe, you delay. When you redeem it, you pay 20%. Leviticus chapter 27 verse 31. If a man will at all redeem out of his tithes, he shall add thereto the fifth part thereof. Now let us see the tithing in the New Testament. Every school of thought don't disagree in Christianity that tithing was done in the Old Testament. What problem we are having is that in the New Testament, it is no longer necessary. And I will stand before God and man and say that it is true. There is no need for 10% anymore. Why? Because Christianity is the fulfillment of the law. Let's see some examples. Matthew chapter 5 verse 21. Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time, Thou shalt not kill, and whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment. But I say unto you, Whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. And whosoever shall say to his brother, Raka, shall be in danger of the council. But whosoever shall say, Thou fool, shall be in danger of hellfire. Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time, Thou shalt not commit adultery. But I say unto you, that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. So we see a graduation. From the Old Testament times into the fulfillment. And the fulfillment is graver than the older one. So Jesus had to confront some of these Pharisees in Matthew 23, 23. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin, and have omitted the weightier matters of the law, judgment, mercy, and faith. These ought ye to have done, and not to leave the other undone. Yet Jesus is not condemning tithing. He is reminding them of the other thing that they should also do along with that. These ought ye to have done, and not leave the other undone. You should have done this one plus the others. Praise the Lord. So Old Testament focused on giving 10% of one's income in order to cater for the Levites and the needy. In Christianity, all is demanded when we give. 
Praise the Lord. I agree 10%. That was Old Testament time. In the New Testament, more than that is required of us. Before I became born again, when I had my payments, there was always a battle to pay my tithe. And my younger sister, who was in winners at that time, because those guys know how to give, she was the angel of my torment. Once she heard that I had gotten paid, she hassled me. Do you know what it's like giving 4 million naira to church for tithe? Or 400,000 naira to... I didn't think that was necessary. So many times I thought I should use it to help those who are around and didn't have something. But now I know that whatever I have belongs to God. In Romans chapter 12 verse 1, it is written, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice holy acceptable unto God which is your reasonable service we are all sacrificed everything our whole bodies have been sacrificed unto God the story was told one time of a man who had a son an only son and that guy was so reckless and the guy was a king so when he was dying he left his will and said that he was leaving everything behind for his slave for the slave that was so faithful that he loved and he gave him everything. But he said, because this is my first son, I want to leave him with something. So he said for him, choose one out of everything that I own. And for the first time in his life, the guy became sober. And he went about seeking opinions from wise people. And they told him what to say. So when he went to the final meeting, and I said, okay, now have you decided on what you wanted to choose? He kept quiet for a while. And he said, I choose only one thing. And he said, what? He said, I choose the slave. Because if I own the slave, then everything that he has belongs to me. Praise the Lord. So if we have been made, we are sacrificed. If our bodies are a living sacrifice unto God, everything that we own belongs to God. We should not be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. That you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. We owe it to God to not be conformed to this world. We are contaminated by the associations that we keep. Show me your friends and I will tell you who you are. I don't subscribe to every time you come to church, say into my life, say into my life, that is not the same one from God. But we have a responsibility, the commandment that have been given unto us to fulfill them. Which we can only do because of knowledge. Acts chapter 4 verse 34. Let us see how this translated. Once the church began. Acts chapter 4 verse 34. Neither was there any among them that lacked. For as many as were possessors of lands or houses sold them. And brought the prices of the things that were sold. And laid them, laid them down at the apostles feet. And distribution was made unto every man according as he had need. And Joseph, who by the apostles was son in Barnabas, which is being interpreted the son of consolation, a Levite and of the country of Cyprus, having land, sold it and brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. Even a Levite sold what he had and brought it. Things have changed now. The apostles are in charge. And they sold all that they had and brought it to the apostles' feet. Acts chapter 2 verse 44. And all that believed were together, and had all things common, and sold their possessions and goods, and parted them to all men, as every man had need. So it is better appreciated now why tithing is given little mention of in the New Testament. It is far beneath the expectation of Jesus, our Lord, who gave his very life for our sakes. You don't give 10%, you give everything according to the leading of your heart. So when people accuse me, I give everything to those who have need, it is because they don't understand what Jesus expects us to do as a church. I appreciate their problems because everyone is coming from some place. But we have a responsibility to run how Jesus wants us to. We are coming from those where you have to give this and give that and sow that and do that and everything is for the church. So they say. 
Many times that is my, our church, that is our school, that is our... It is not your school because you cannot attend it for free. And you don't get any remuneration from it either. When we come from such a background, it is difficult for us to appreciate when you give, like scripture commands us to. Why? First John chapter 3 verse 16. Hereby perceive we the love of God because he laid down his life for us. And we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. But whoso hath this world's good, and seeth his brother have need, and shutteth up his bowels of compassion from him, how dwelleth the love of God in him? How do you say that you love God, whom you cannot see? Your fellow man that you see is in need, and you deny them, and you come and say, praise the Lord. You don't love God. You don't even know who God is. Let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. So when sometimes people say, I don't give pastor any money in church because we just distribute it. Be glad that your money is used to help people. God will recompense you for good in the name of Jesus. Money is a tool. Nobody will take it anywhere. When we die, that's it. I shared the other day about a madman who was saying ah, a rich man was being buried. And the guy couldn't comprehend why the man. He said, ah, this, this grave is too small for this man now. I said, why? He said, the man has trailer. He has houses. He has to build, dig a big grave that will contain everything. The foolishness of the wise. It's not the wisdom of the fool. Because he was right. We pay too much attention to material things that we will die and live. Christians don't move by sight. We walk by faith. We say that a lot, but we don't live it. We don't act it. When we are with someone who is little, who is little lower than we are financially, we tend to feel that we are gods. However rich you are, there is always someone richer. Nobody has anything that is so too much about, if I may use that word. Because if you are good looking, there is always someone better looking than you. And if we begin to understand our places in God, then we have a responsibility to die for one another. The day you don't have, I shall give you. And when I don't have, you shall gladly give me. If God gives me the grace to be a prophet unto you, the day I am sick, the healer in our midst will come pray for me. That is why nobody is too great in the house of God. There is nothing that we are or hope to be that God hasn't given to us. We need to understand our places of sacrifice in Christianity. Are there any consequences when we fail? Malachi chapter 3 verse 8. Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But you say, wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. Ye are cursed with a curse. For ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house. And prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts. If I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be a room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and he shall not destroy the fruit of your ground. Neither shall your vein cast a fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. And all nations shall call you blessed, for ye shall be a delightsome land, saith the Lord of hosts. There was a lady whose child got locked down by a car. And when they told her, she ran to the spot. And she said, God, you promised me that no devourer will come near me or my gate. I am a titan. Because of this, I refuse that my child has died. She was quarreling with God, reminding God of his promises. You have said in your word in Malachi chapter 3, verse 8 to 10. And the dead child rose up. We do not understand the power of God. That's why many of us are running from one satanic prophet to another. You will get yourself into bigger trouble. Because you have the key to your problems in your hands. The simple things that God has told us to do, we don't do them. We rob him. And we argue, well, Christians should not pay tithe now. True. We shouldn't pay 10%. If you don't want to pay 10%, then sell all that you have and give it to God. There's no time when you will relax and give nothing to God. There's no time. May God give us wisdom 
in the name of Jesus. Second Corinthians chapter 9 verse 6. But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. And he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Giving is a condition that you must do to receive. Because we have Galatians chapter 6 verse 7. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. It's a given. And the greatest thing of this is that when you sow a little, you get so much more. When you plant a seed of corn, you have many ears of corn. When you sow the wind, then you receive a whirlwind. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Don't get weary. I'm tired. I've been giving, giving, giving. Most people who grumble are angry people. We were talking about Solomon outside a couple of minutes ago. And we were talking about angry people can get angry over anything. React and say things that they shouldn't. Carry the problem of A and rub it on C, Q, and Z. That's one of the dangerous things of anger. So many times we stand face to face with God and challenge him at the same time as we are thinking that we are very intelligent people. As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. When you have a chance to bless somebody in church and you do not, but you go out and be a blessing to other people, pagans, and you send your seed in on fertile ground. Even though that is a given, but our primary constituency is the church. Are there problems if we don't give, if we don't pay our tithes, or don't support church? Acts chapter 5 verse 1. But a certain man named Ananias with Sapphira his wife sold the possession and kept back part of the price. His wife also being privy to it and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why had Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price of the land? Whilst it remained, was it not thine own? And after it was sold, was it not in thine own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thine heart? Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God. But Ananias, hearing this, was fell down and gave up the ghost. And great fear came on all them that heard these things. And it was about the space of three hours after, when his wife, not knowing what was done, came in. And Peter answered unto her, Tell me whether ye sold the land for so much. And she said, Yeah, for so much. And there are many of us who, who can lie. Many of us can really look Jesus in the face and lie. Many times I have, I was in Kuala Lumpur one time and I saw something about our, one of our sisters and I called her and I said to her, that's what is happening. She said, no, that, that, that girl. So in my heart, I grieved. And when I came back, I was standing at the gate there and she said to me, but pastor, how did you know? It has been said that the Holy Ghost is a gossip. There are many of us that will sit back and lie about some, some of them are close to me and you tell them and you know they are lying and they still lie. You ask yourself, is this a friend or an enemy? It happened like that way back then. And Peter said to her, tell me whether you sold the land for so much. And she said, yes, for so much. Then Peter said unto her, how is it that ye have agreed together to tempt the spirit of the Lord? Behold, the feet of them which have buried thy husband are at the door, and they shall carry thee out. Then fell she down straight away at his feet, and yielded all the goats. And the young men came in and found her dead, and carrying her forth, buried her by her husband. We shall not die because of such lies in the name of Jesus. They sold everything that they had. Nobody forced them to. So when you give, nobody is forcing you to give. You must have that conviction in your heart that giving is something that Jesus demands of us because he paid the price for us. He shed his blood for us. So when you see somebody without a smile because it's not always about money, you give him one. You see somebody without bread, you put one on their table. Someone came to church, didn't have means to go back, you can't carry them home, give them. Brother Siri, when he first came to church, I would drive from here to Udu Road to pick him and several times until God blessed him with a car. And now he goes from place to place. Today he went to Ira to pick somebody after bringing his family. 
These things are a necessity for every believer. Many of us are so self-conceited, we are so myopic in our thinking, that I, I'm just like, you have to do it for me. You're not doing it for me, then you're not a Christian. You're not a Christian at all. Because, oh, you didn't, didn't do this for me. That, that, that is not Christianity. Christianity is all about giving. Giving and giving. Suffer yourself to be defrauded. Even when it hurts. Do good to those who despitefully use and persecute you. That is what we are commanded to do. Give. Give and give. Don't think about yourself. The one who called you. The one who watches over you. He will take care of you. We shall soon testify in the name of Jesus. I'm running out of patience with people who cannot run with the truth. People overseas, everywhere, when they come in contact with this truth, they rejoice and they, they fire up and they want other people to know. But it is always the case. When St. Paul began with the Jews, they didn't know what he was talking about. They couldn't run with him. And he said, now I go to the Gentiles, your blood be upon your head. Many times, the people who first receive it don't appreciate it. Here's Paul's testimony. Acts chapter 20 verse 24. But none of these things move me. Neither count my life dear unto myself. So that I might finish my curse with joy. And the ministry which I have received of the Lord. To testify the gospel of the grace of God. Wherefore I take you to record this day. That I am pure from the blood of all men. For I have not shown to declare unto you the counsel of God. Take it therefore unto yourselves. And to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost had made you overseers to feed the church of God, which he had purchased with his own blood. To feed the church is not only with the word of God. To feed the church, because now we know how the church operated in primitive times. For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. We have them now, even in our midst. They hinder us, frustrate us, fight us how they can. But we are confident that the God who told us from the beginning that this will happen will deliver us from their strongholds in the name of Jesus. Also of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after themselves. We see that today people don't know what is true anymore. People who have heard the truth, wrestle with the truth. Uh, no, I want to let me go and solve that problem. That man is doing something that let me go. Do you know where the power of that man is? Ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. May God not let us get into such a situation that we will go to Satan, even willfully, in the name of Jesus. So these guys will rise up and they will seek to draw men unto themselves, cause confusion in the church. Make themselves important, like they are some kind of it is not just about today. 2,000 years before it began. Therefore watch and remember that by the space of three years I cease not to warn everyone night and day with tears. I did my very best to make you understand I have withheld nothing that God has revealed unto me from you. 33. I have coveted no man's silver or gold or apparel. Yea, ye yourselves know that these hands have ministered unto my necessities and to them that were with me. You can see that Paul walked. So because you are a pastor, there's nothing that says you cannot walk. But when you are being battled left, right, and center, you may make mistakes. But Paul had a testimony that he not only walked, but he did something with his earnings by helping the poor. You yourselves know that these hands have ministered unto my necessities and to them that were with me. I have showed you all things. How that so laboring you ought to support the weak. And to remember the words of the Lord Jesus. How he said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. The mentality that we have so long carried must stop. If we cannot help one another. If somebody is in trouble and all you do is mock. Instead of finding a way to help. You are only paving a way for your future calamity. We are so short-sighted, many of us cannot see beyond our noses. But even as we give, what will be our attitude? Mark chapter 12, verse 41. And Jesus sat over against the treasury and beheld how the people cast money into the treasury. And many that were rich cast in much. And there came a certain poor widow 
And she threw in two mites, which make a farthing. And he called unto his disciples and said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that this poor widow hath cast more in than all they which have cast into the treasury. For all they did cast in of their abundance, but she of her wants did cast in all that she had, even all her living. So our giving is not, we don't pride ourselves because I gave 10 million naira, therefore I'm more important than you. God knows that the one who gave 500 naira has given more than the one who has given 10 million. God's arithmetic is not like ours. You must understand that unless we stand in the place of understanding with God, we're going to run afoul of him. If we cannot give, we are telling God that we don't deserve to be blessed. If we cannot give, we are removing from us the instrument of our beginning with God. The woman gave all that she had. So in the sight of God, she gave so much more than all the rich men put together. That is why 2,000 years later, nobody is talking about all those people. Everyone is talking about this woman. May God teach us to be givers in absolute terms in the name of Jesus. Number two, Matthew chapter 6 verse 19. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. Don't put all your efforts in places and things that will die and perish with time. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. So all those people who could give, but they are holding back. You can't come to church because you don't have money for offering, but you had money all the week long to do what you want to do with. You hold money and you say, I don't have money for transport. And the person gives you, and you think you are clever. You are selling yourself short. You are making yourself to be displaced when the blessing of God comes. You can hide from man, but can anyone hide from God? No one. So will you understand that there is someone who sees your heart and he will judge you accordingly? If you are kind to people, God will be kind to you in judgment. If you are hostile to others, that is how God will be hostile to you. There will always be poor people in our midst. God expects us from the first century church to cater for the poor in our midst. He didn't bring them so that we can ridicule them or mock them. He brought them to us so that we can nurture them. There are many poor people who have become kings and presidents. May God make us one of such in the name of Jesus. Second Corinthians chapter 9 verse 6. But this I say, he who soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. And he who soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man according as he has proposed in his heart, so let him give. Not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that ye always, having all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. So when you give, don't murmur. It is amazing how we can give our children money to go to AJ or Cisnas or somewhere. And when you want to give to God, you're looking for, for the... You want to give the offering of Cain. God is watching every one of us. He is looking out for who to bless. God knows the people that come to church respectfully early. He knows those who are dragged to church. He knows the ones who come to church and begin to spoil the minds of others. Who have nothing to say but point out problems. God knows everyone and he promised us that everyone will be judged according to their works. Everyone, not some, everyone. In John chapter 5, 20 to 9, said the time is coming. Marvel not at this, that the hour is coming when all that are in the grave shall hear his voice and come forth. Those who have done good to the resurrection of life and those who have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. Every one of us. We are not going to give all those giving after we have died. Here and now, in spite of ourselves, in spite of our imperfection, if we can look unto our neighbors with compassion, God himself will judge us with compassion. 
May he make somebody wise today in the name of Jesus. In a village in Ugali South, Okwama, they call the place, a lady lost her child. Her son died. Before anyone could know, she just carried the child and ran to the church and placed the child on the altar. She knelt there and challenged God. He said, if I have defaulted in the pain of my tithe, then let this child die. When God gives you, he said, draw nigh unto me, then I will draw nigh unto you. He knows what he is saying. You have some work to do. The woman understood tithing. If I have defaulted, she knew that when they gave her 10 naira, she took one and gave it to God. When she went to the market and she sold and she got 1,000 naira, she took 100 out of that and gave it to God. She was faithful. She didn't default one time. So she could begin with God. If I have, de- even if you were an ordinary man, and this kind of person comes to you, if I have ever defaulted like this, will you not move in that person's favor? Many of us don't know how to bargain. You run from Satan. You know this man is a Satan, but go and let Satan bless me anyway because I want this thing desperately. He will deliver us from such in the name of Jesus. She dropped the cups in the morning and went away. Forgot about the child and went away because she was convinced that this God, unless God lied, if he had said I will rebuild the devourer for the sake of those who pay their tithes, then this God must do something with my child. Later, they ran and they were shouting, the child is crying in the church. A child is crying there. And she ran there to bring her child alive. Nobody prayed for the child. She didn't just say, God, if I have, I, I challenge you this day to start making such vows. All those of you who are faithful in your tithing, here is the secret to getting what you want from God. Not so into my life, so into my life, so into my bring aeroplane, buy that, do that. That is carnal. If you do this, then I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. Let me tell you, all those who say you may not tithe at all, Look at their lives. They are usually very poor. And all the guys say, no tithing, no this, just be doing as you like. They are usually poor. Because whatsoever a man sows. I challenge you this day, this is not my favorite topic. So while the opportunity has come to do so, understand, let it sink into your heart. A word they say is enough for the wise. Don't wait again. For this kind of talk before you pick yourself up and bring yourself in obedience to God. If you can, there must be a bargaining tool in your hands to approach God. Your prayer, your faith increases at such times. There was a time a man working in a big institution. He wanted a superior office. So what did he do? He found out how much they were paying in that office and began to pay the tithe of that office. When he received his salary, instead of paying tithe for this office, he was paying more than he needed to into the other office. Miraculously, when that man left, they searched for this man and picked him and put him there. Because he has earned it. There are many things that Jesus wanted us to know. But in our own cleverness, we have cut ourselves off. All I have is money for my family and myself, so don't come bother me. Every sacrifice that you make is registered in heaven. Recently, a survey was carried out in the U.S. between those who tithe and those who do not tithe. And the survey discovered this, that the happiest, the healthiest, and the richest people were those who paid their tithes. It is a miracle. You are giving out what you have and God is cutting your problems short. So on the long run, you are having many times more than the person who refuses to pay his or her tithe. Greedy people. Many of us are too greedy because we don't understand what is expected of us to be blessed. There is nobody who doesn't want to be blessed. Well, here is the key to getting blessed. Give and it shall be given unto you. May we bow our heads and begin to ask God for mercy. In times when we have shown greed, when we have loved ourselves more than we have loved other people, I am sorry, Father, for those times. I may not be rich, but if you have given me grace to earn one naira, it is a given that somebody should be blessed. If I have unknowingly run my own race, have mercy upon me. 
Now that I know, give me the grace to fulfill my obligations to you. And teach me to brag like others and pray like others. If I have defaulted in my tithe, then let this thing happen. Put me in that position of faith and authority that my testimonies will increase. I no longer want to be a second class citizen amongst your people. Help me to pave my way to the top. That in all the things that concern me, your name will be glorified by the power that is in the mighty name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Any questions? You said that uh, tithing is no longer needed. That it is all. So at this point, I, I got confused. No, I said 10%. I said I agree with them. 10% yeah. in the Old Testament times was given. But in Christianity, all of it is required. So the minimum that a Christian can give is 10 percent okay okay now i got it so all right the minimum a christian 10 percent can give yes okay. yes you can give all if god leads you to you can give 10 percent but if you give nine percent you are stealing from god praise okay. the lord thank you sir praise the lord hallelujah i really want to appreciate pastor for this great teaching because it has given us great insight. I want to believe. I got another insight into giving. Just like Bravins and said, you know, 10% from the Old Testament, but in, in, in the New Testament times, we are supposed to give all, which is the truth. Yes. We are supposed to give all. It is even a privilege for us to be given that 10%. Yes. We are supposed to give all, but they said, okay, bring 10%. Yeah. We should be happy. It's a privilege to even say, okay, we are beating it down yes. to 10%. Yes. But really, this New Testament times, it is all just like yeah. it was written in um, Acts 4, I think. Yes. That they gave, they sold lands, houses, and all, and they brought it to the apostles' feet. Yes. That is what it's supposed to be yes not being limited to just that 10 percent yes. that 10 percent is just like okay let us just set a limit yes you know yes. A, a lower limit yes don't go beneath below this yes but it's supposed to be above that yes so i would really appreciate you once again for the insight thank god and i just hope people will we all will truly Get this insight and act accordingly. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. There was an old friend of mine. He's a provincial pastor in Lagos. He pays 30% of his tithe. 30, he used to own... Uh, well, let me not talk about him. You know, and suddenly things began to happen in his life. And one day he called me and he told me... Even then I didn't agree with him because tithing was difficult for me at the time. But now I begin to understand his wisdom that you can give more and testify more. Put God to the test and your circumstance will change for good in the name of Jesus. Sir, I want to ask again. You know, in this type, the way some people pay their tithe and others differ. Yes. I want to ask, tithe, like a farmer, when we are tithe begins, 10% of whatever the, the harvest is what they brought to the house of God. You know, in the course of that harvesting they take and eat with their family and they bring 10 percent to the house of god yes but now it has been translated to we business yes. we doing business yes. we earning salary is it as you spending from what you have in and the leftover is what you are going to pay 10 percent of or is it the total of what you earn that you will pay the 10% off? It's a good question. It's your earning. I used to know an old man, my, my elder sister's husband's father. If you went to him and greeted him and you gave him 10,000 naira, he will not wait for you to live there. He will take, remove 1,000 and say, this is not God's own. 
he didn't want to forget that he took God last. So whatever, even if it is a gift, remove God's own. That is when you can go to him and say, God, because I have done this. What is foolishness in this is you don't want to give. And when you give, if you give 10,000, for instance, God can give you 10 million. But because you don't know that God can give you 10 million, you are so short-sighted, you are looking at uh, this, this, this 10,000. Let me just use it to buy this. You lose out from what God wants to do. So it is your understanding that I want to partner with God. When you partner with God, you are making, when you give God 10%, you are making him your partner. How will a business fail while partnering with God? It's not possible. So God will open our eyes in the name of Jesus. Yes, sir. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, the issue of uh, Titan. I want to find out if some of this uh, church, if they are doing it right. I've been to a ministry where, as you are welcome as a member, the first thing they do is to call you for an interview to find out how much is your income. And then they put your name in a register. They have a very big register containing every member of the church. Now, they will tell you, they will spell out the 10% for you. You go into agreement with them concerning it. Now, every month, you'll be bringing your tithe. They, they take it very serious, more than anything in the church. And now what will happen is that, as a member of this fellowship, if you don't usually come to remit this tithe, when anything happens, maybe you lose your mother, whatever happened to you, they will first of all go back to this register. Open the register and find out if truly you are a tight payer before they will respond to your need. I want to know if this is the kind of tight we are talking about. Praise the Lord. As a matter of fact, I'm hearing it for the first time. Am I the only one hearing it for the first time? Well, I haven't heard it. That you go to church and somebody asks you how much you earn and all of that. It is, it is very wrong. In my former church, Brahmonde Ogude was in that church with me. I paid tithe once. It was a big sum. I did, everybody suddenly knew about it. And I, even though I was a giver, I tired at that time to give. <laughs> it's like some people go to that register to see who was tithing. And after church, long line was waiting with lists of because if you have so much to tithe, then you must have so much to spare. Your tithing is supposed to be between you and your God. And that's why I say you have to give it without conditions. You love God, so you are giving him that. You are making him your partner. You are not giving to God because you want to impress someone. When you do that, you have received your reward already. They will say, this guy is a heavy tither or is a big earner. Like I said... The person who gives 10 naira and has earned um, 20 naira has given 50% of his tithing. God will honor that person more than the person who gave 1 million because he earned 10 million. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's not about the size of your giving. It is the state of your understanding, the mind that you will have and the degree of your giving. So if one person has one naira and gives 90 kobo, and another person has 10 million naira and gave 1 million naira, the person who gave 90 kobo is superior in giving to the one who gave a million. So it is not about anyone. It is all about God. As we are seated here, God knows the ones who are cheating on him. God knows the one who could have given more and they have given less. I may never know that. So it's not about me, it's not about the church, it is all about God. May God give us grace that whenever we have to come before him to give, we will look up only and at no other. And may that God who sees in secret reward us openly in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Sir, I want to be clear about this tithe, especially the civil servant workers. 
For instance, you are receiving 85,000 naira as your salary. Then you have loans, outstanding loans. They deduct from SOX. They deduct housing. Then uh, tax. Then uh, what? NUT. At the end, you have 20,000 left. Are you going to pay the tax for that 85,000 naira or that 20,000 naira left? Can you, can you say that again? What, what deductions were, what, what were the decisions made for? Sir? Deductions. Made for what? You know? Like taxes or? The tax, like teacher, let me say for example, we pay NUT, they deduct NUT, then uh, outing, then maybe you, you, you took loan from bank, they deduct from stocks, and at the end, what is getting to you is 20,000. Are you going to pay from that 20,000 or initial 85,000 as your salary? When, when you took the loan, did you pay tight on it? When you took the loan, did you pay tight on it? No. Did no. you? Okay. Now, if you didn't pay tight on it, and you are saying they are deducting so much from, your, from the loan that you took, who should be responsible for that payment, you or God? I don't know. I don't know. That is why. I'm no, no, I'm you. asking you. I, I'm not condemning you. I'm only asking you a question. Who should be responsible if you took that money and you spent on yourself and now they are deducting the money, you are paying so much interest rate on it. Who should pay for that interest rate? The loan you took is something that press you. It's not that you spent, maybe you are into debt and you just took the loan to pay the debt. Sometimes you don't even spend it on yourself to settle the debt you are holding. Can, can somebody help my sister? <laughs> uh, okay. Praise the Lord. Sit down. Sit down. I work with the government like you do. Yes. At the end of the month, there's what we call pay slip. I don't know if you receive pay slip. The pay slip, all the deduction, how you are paid is there. All of the deductions are there. Your tax, like you said. Your national housing fund. Your pension money. This money are yours. I hope you know. They are yours at the end of the day. So what you pay your tithe on is your 85,000 naira. That is what came to you. All of this deduction, normally even if you do, if, if they don't deduct tax at source, won't you pay your tax? Because they know that you and I would not pay. So they deduct it at source. All of these payments are necessary. All of the laws that you, that you took is for your help. You took it to help you to do one thing or the other. At one time, point in time, one, of, one or two persons have taken loan, but your tithe is your salary. What comes, you pay tithe on what comes before the deduction. That is what I, I do. That is what it is. Because the National Housing Fund is your money. At the end of the day, at retirement, it will be given to you. Your Association of Senior Civil Servants, I don't know whether you, they pay. If you want to do something, you go to them, they give you money. So, it is not debatable. You pay tight on your complete salary. Praise Thank the you. Lord. God will deliver us from every financial mess we are in, in Jesus' name. And more than that, God sees our hearts, our struggles. Many of us are in such mess. But God is able it will turn things around for good in the name of Jesus. Yes. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I disagree with my sister. Based <laughs> on the tax, when they pay you your tax, pay as you earn. Everybody, they speak in mind. Pay as you earn. Before the salary comes to you, they've taken everything. We have a lot of unions. They will deduct everything from your salary. And maybe you are supposed to receive 100000 Union will take some amount, tax will take some amount. At the end of the day, you are given 80,000 naira. That 80,000 is what comes to you. That is your money. You pay from that. The loan you have taken is your personal loan. You know that you, you took loan. You not pay the, uh, uh, your tithe from your loan. So at the end of the day, you know the money that comes to you at the end of the day. So you have to pay based on that your salary that comes to you. Aside tax and whatever deduction. Oh, yes. That is what I feel is Pray, right. Praise the Lord. Do you know what we just said? The minimum that we may pay is 10%. If you can give 20%, go ahead and do it. Let everyone be persuaded 
in their heart what they want to do. May God make us great givers and great testifiers too in the name of Jesus. You want to say something? Yeah, yes, sir. It, no, it's not on this. Uh, I just want to ask because there is this um, a kind of uh, what my parents they used to do in Anglican church when we were younger. Even before I entered the secondary school, my mother has still paying tight for me. They have card that they pay the tithe. And each time she's paying that tithe, she will write what she wants God to do for me. That is their tradition. That's what they do. You know? Even up to now, until, it was until I got married, and I told her, please stop paying tithe. I can pay my own. You know? So is it that, were they doing wrong things then? Because I still believe that God has had that prayer. No, I think they were trying to teach their children how to tithe. I think it's a noble thing. I'm hearing it for the first time. Job used to go and make sacrifices for his children. He wasn't sure what they were up to. That perhaps could have led them to do that. It is good. You know, to help your children tight. It's a lesson I want to teach mine. Any more questions? Yes, sir. Okay. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I, I, want, I just want to, uh, for that clarification on this issue of loan. If, for example, you want to go into a business and you obtain loan from the bank or from a cooperative society, are you expected to pay tight on that loan that you are investing into a business? That is on one hand. Yes. On the other hand, again, maybe you have a friend who is well to do, and uh, you approached him, you pleaded with him to give you a form of assistance, either in cash or in kind. You needed this car. You needed this car for your personal use, not for business. And then I asked you, how much is the car? And you said, two million naira. He said, okay, and that is the exact amount for the car. And then I said, okay, take two million naira, go and buy that car. Are you expected to pay tight for that two million naira? Praise the Lord. To tight the car you want to buy? Yes. Why don't you just buy the car and bring two tires to the... Praise the Lord. We are not, we are not slaves. Eh? You are not, you see, tithing is not intended to punish us. It is intended to partner with God. You know, so what we can give, your first question is, if you take a loan, do you tithe on it? Two things come up. If you, tithe, if you don't tithe on the first loan, and, you're, and it has been deducted from your salary, you must still pay that full salary percentage to God. Do you understand? But if you did a tithe on it, then you may not pay on it because you have already paid on the capital sum. Are you with me? So when you want to buy a car, for instance, you have money, you want to buy a car, that is presumed from your profit. You can do with yourself, with your money, whatsoever you desire. Unless, again, it comes from your heart or God speaks to you to do this, that is the only time that you may do so. Praise the Lord. Two more and then we'll run along. Uh, okay. Stanley. Okay. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Pastor, I want to ask this question. I have two questions. One is a question. The other one is a kind of contribution. The question is this. Maybe as a worker, I receive my salary at the end of the month. Then I brought a salary to my wife. We removed the one of God and all the miscellaneous everything. Then I gave out from that money to my wife. Just this is your own. Is she supposed to pay tight again from that one? You have already, you have already tight it. You, you, you already paid tight on all of it. Yes, then I just gave a token yes. to my wife. Yes. Do you know I'm supposed to pay from that one again? Yes, if she doesn't, it's all right. But if she does, it's better. Then my contribution mm -hmm. is good to be tightened. Paying your tithe is very good. Mm -hmm. I remember at the time when I was really faithful in paying my tithe, there was this little contribution we were doing that time, a kind of a daily collector. In that my area, the woman was very faithful to everybody. But it happens that there was one day, the woman gathered everybody money from that, in fact, nearly the whole of Uruguay. And this woman 
discharged from Oregon, from, in fact, from Delta State. <laughs> so when the rumor come to me that afternoon, I told my wife, I say, the woman, I saw a woman, and I you lure me to the pay money to this woman. I said, now the woman has, you no, know, run with my money. I said, but, the, my, I said, the woman will bring my money to me. So when I was confessing that, my compa people, some of them were just money. Hey, my money don't go. One papa, one isoko, very old man. Say this money, they say, where? Gather this woman, this woman. I said, I said, this woman, my money must come to me. I said, wherever this woman have, wherever, I say, God should visit that woman. When I was saying this, people around me, they, say, the money don't go. I said, my own never go. Then when I entered, I said, God, I don't say I know they collect better money, but that your tithe, I I did two one. I say in as far as they pay tight, God, where even the city man travel out of this country, visit this woman, may come give my money. I just spoke it like that, then I left. Could you believe that the following day, this woman touch from corner, 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 and come to my gate and say, "In my man nowhere." Uh, he called the see people one flogger for night. People they flog her for night. He said, No, wrong with your money. I said, But where is my money now? She handled it to me. Oh. As I'm telling you, eh, all the people in that area, this woman did not pay a dime to them. But I retrieved hey. my money. Praise the Lord. But the, another, to, another thing attached to it, since that time, Pastor, I found it very difficult to pay my tithe. So I really want you to pray with me too, so that <laughs> I can. Continue it again. Praise the Lord. So, what, what do you want the devil to do? You made him to refund that money to you. You shamed him that time. So, he wants to get back at you. Yeah? So, you have to make effort. You cannot lose when you pay your tithe. I thank God for that testimony. May it inspire everyone in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, this issue of tithing, I want to get uh, something very clear. Because for a contractor who, who does contract, he's been mobilized to start the contract work. And at the end of the day, after finishing the work and he's been paid, he calculates how much he spent for labor, transportation, feeding, and the rest. It is from the profit he paid his tithe. And for a market woman who goes to the village to get years, coming to town to sell, she calculates her feeding money on the way, transportation, and for everything. After selling the years, it is from her profit she pays the tithe. I want to understand for workers, when you are offered an, uh, an employment, everything is being stated up, your feeding allowance, your lunch, your accommodation, your wardrobe, and the rest. And there is a basic salary. Your basic is also stated. Then maybe you, you, you have a, a run total for annual and at the end of the month it's been shared times 12 and you are being given. So if you must pay your tithe in that condition, are you to pay from the basic or from the total? Let, let me tell you what I do. When I'm paid, I pay everyone, every bank and everything, and the, everything else belongs to God. I don't say, well, this is... I look at those who have not paid their rent, who have not paid their fees. How can we get this land? How can we do this and do that? I do it. I want to advise you. Anytime you have to give, don't look for the barest minimum. The person that you are dealing with is the almighty God. He is the only uncreated being. The degree of your giving is inversely proportional to your knowledge of him. So, you, you know, I love God. I love God. How do I know that I love God? Not because I say so, but because I act it. Whatever your questions are, know that when you give to God out of a loving heart, because you have come to know Him, when others lose their job, you will be promoted. I have seen that happen too many times. God will do it for someone in the name of Jesus.